With Apple's WWDC fast approaching in early June, more and more rumors are pointing towards Apple's next generation of their custom Apple Silicon, making an appearance at the conference. So, which Macs will get M2, and when? Let's talk about that. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell. Based on what we've seen with M1, we'll be expecting M2 to bring MacBook Air, a MacBook Pro 13-inch M2, 14 and 16-inch MacBook Pro M2 and M2 Max, Mac Mini M2 and M2 Pro, an iMac with M2, Mac Studio with M2 Max and M2 Ultra, and we've already had leaks of unreleased Macs, courtesy of Apple themselves. The studio displays built-in software references, the Mac Mini 10.1, but I'm not so sure that this is the M2 for WWDC. The latest information suggests that this is more likely to fill the M1 Pro slot in Apple's lineup, although the same source suggested there could also be an M1 Max in a Mini as well under that designation and while it wouldn't be odd to have two chip options under the Mac Mini 10.1 designation overlapping with the Mac Studio does seem odd although it could be argued that the Mac Mini with M1 Max would have less connectivity and maybe smaller storage options but I would have found it more plausible if the Mac Studio didn't offer the binned M1 Max version still I wouldn't rule that out but back to M2, because that's what we're talking about in this video. Mark Gurman has suggested that a couple of these M2 Macs could be showcased at WWDC, and that four versions of the M2 have already been spotted in third-party developers' app logs. Those four would line up nicely with M2, M2 Pro, M2 Max, and M2 Ultra. Most likely we'd see an M2 in a MacBook Air, an iMac, a Mac Mini, and possibly a new version of the MacBook Pro 13 in chassis, although I'd still hope that Apple takes the touch bar out of that and calls it the MacBook. It just makes the most sense to me. The MacBook Air with M2 is the notebook I'd most expect to see at WWDC. That's the one that will be coming with the full redesign, iMac-like colors, and probably white keyboards and bezels. And those bezels are likely to be a lot thinner than before too, just like the MacBook Pros last year, and most likely with the similar notched cutout for the camera modules, for the ambient light sensors and the true tone sensors. Previously, Guoming Chi has suggested that these MacBook Airs with the redesign could be powered by M1 rather than M2, though that really feels unlikely to me. I've speculated that Apple might be planning to keep the current M1 MacBook Air in the range with a reduced price when the M2 arrives, but I guess there's also a chance that Apple could release an M1 powered version of the new design at $999 instead of the M2 version, which will probably come at a premium around $11. 99 and the rumored 15 inch version could sit at 1399 or 1499 perhaps but more on that later before we go too much further as well it's worth mentioning what we actually expect m2 itself to be i'm expecting the m2 to be based on the a15 architecture from the iphone 13 although i know a lot of people because of the delays to m2's launch are wondering whether they would use a16 cores from the forthcoming iphone 14 pro as we've heard that the non-pro versions of the iphone 14 could actually keep an a15 inside I very much believe that the M2 chips are already produced and have been on the shelf ready to go for a little while. Also, the fact that A15 is going to be in the majority of iPhones even in 2022 suggests that the technology in A16 is not ready for that level of mass production, so there's a chance it could be on a smaller process node like 4 nanometers or even 3 nanometers. and if the yields are low, then making the larger Mac chips could be disastrous until that improves. But A14 to A15 has shown about a 9% increase in single core speed and a 14% in multi core performance improvement, as well as 26% faster graphics in the iPhone, and where the thermals are less of an issue in the iPad mini, around 50% faster graphics. The chances are we'll be seeing closer to the 26% improvement, as the M1 wasn't constrained thermally either, but it's good to have all the detail. We're expecting the M2 to feature a balance of four performance avalanche cores and four blizzard efficiency cores, similar to the M1 with its Firestorm and Ice Storm cores but with 10 GPU cores instead of the 8 in M1. And just as with the M1 some of the entry level models will have lower bin chips and could well include 8 or 9 active GPU cores which is unlikely to affect performance noticeably in lower demand tasks which are in the main what most users will spend the majority of their time doing. And this is why the MacBook Air has been even when it was powered by the pretty incapable Intel chips, Apple's best seller by far. But now even with the lowest binned M1 chips, it's a very capable computer, not just for those day-to-day -day office type tasks, but even 4K video editing and 3D modeling. For more than 90% of users, M1 and of course now M2 would be the right choice. For the 90% then, expect to see the M2 chips 
at WWDC or at the latest in Max this autumn. Given that we've already seen the redesign of the iMac, there shouldn't be any major delays there. I'm still not sure that the 13-inch MacBook Pro will retain its name, as I've mentioned. If the Air gets the redesign with a more modern design, I think people would pay more for that than the old style of Pro, especially if the touch bar is going to be removed. I'd personally reclassify that as the pure MacBook at $999 and give that the entry-level M2 slot, Place the Air as a premium at $1199, as I mentioned before, with the M1 Air keeping the old design and maybe going in at $849. The Mac Mini with M1 could then drop to like $549 or even $499, and the M2 Mac Mini at $699 will fill its old price point. But 90% isn't everyone, of course, so let's talk about more fun Macs. I know that that's why you're here. We've already heard that the next version of Apple's MacBook Pro proper, the 14 and 16 inch variants with the M2 Pro and M2 Max, are expected to launch at the beginning of 2023, so I'd expect to see these at either a March or April event. And I'd expect the tagline for this to be something about something big, uh, because that's when I'm also expecting to see the larger MacBook Air debut. Now, I was skeptical that Apple would actually release such a device, but Ross Displayman Young from Display Supply Chain Consultants, or DSCC, seems confident that Apple is preparing a 15.2-inch model, and other than the one time when he tried to guess the iPhone SE's name, iPhone SE Plus 5G, seemed realistic his leaks have been 100 percent accurate when around display panels which is his specialty and also which devices they're going to end up in sometimes sticking to what you know really works <laughs> the macbook pro models are expected to stick with mini led panels and they've been widely praised again from ross young i think this is kind of mind-blowing apple actually sold more mini led notebooks in that quarter when they launched than the entire rest of the industry sold oled laptops in the same amount of time across all of those manufacturers Oh, and if you're not subscribed already, that would make you the max to my MacBook Pro. Sorry, I don't even know what that means. Moving on. The one big addition I'd love to see coming to these MacBook Pros is Face ID. Now, I'm pretty confident that that's why Apple made the notch the size that they did, so that they wouldn't have to expand it sideways for Face ID when that's finally implemented. And I know a lot of people, including like not Linus Tech Tips, said, oh, why would you make it ready for that and, and like make it too big? because they don't want people to complain when it gets bigger when they put Face ID in. That's obviously kind of the intention. I, I, I'm not sure why that's controversial. But to be honest, I'm not confident that the components can actually be made shallow enough to fit in the lid this year. Hopefully it won't be too long though. Of course, upgrading the HDMI port to 2.1 and the SD card reader to the faster standards would be nice as well. But I'll honestly say I don't think there's anyone out there that's thinking of buying a MacBook Pro that's gone, well, I'm not getting it because it's got HDMI 2.0 in it. That's not going to increase sales at all but it's definitely something that would be a nice little quality of life improvement if you like. Now that leaves the Mac Studio and the Mac Pro models, Apple's highest end desktops, and I don't think we'll be seeing a studio get an update to the M2 Max and M2 Ultra until at least next spring, potentially alongside those MacBook Pros. But after Apple mentioned that we have the Mac Pro to see before the end of the transition, it's most likely to be seen at this WWDC in June. Apple has said that the M2 Ultra is the last chip in the M1 series, which leaves us with a couple of possibilities, however. First, we see a dual M1 Ultra setup, effectively four M1 Max chips working together in a Mac Pro, which could be the case, although we've seen that the M1 Max to M1 Ultra doesn't exist exactly scale the way we'd hope in many tasks. The other rumour that we've heard though is that the Mac Pro with Apple Silicon could be entirely its own architecture for those chips and not a part of the M series that we've seen so far. This would make sense in a way, just like Intel has its core series with i3, i5, i7 and i9, but separates its highest end workstation chips into the Xeon series. This concerns me however because, to be honest, Apple has been terrible at updating the Mac Pro chips since 2013. Can't innovate anymore, my ass. <laughs> The 2013 trash can Mac Pro never got a real update and was still on sale at the same price until 2019. The 2019 Mac Pro arrived just ahead of Apple Silicon's transition and has seen no processor updates too, although it has seen a few graphics card options be added to the online configuration tool. Why is the Mac Pro neglected though? It's that 90% thing that we talked about up front. If 90% of the Mac audience uses the base M series Macs and the vast majority of the other 10% go to a MacBook Pro, there's very little demand for a very expensive Mac Pro and there's little incentive for Apple to pay too much attention to updating it. Now, if Apple was to go down the route of multiple M2 or M1 Macs chiplets inside a Mac Pro, 
it has the best chance of being updated at the same pace as the rest of Apple's Mac lineup. The chips will be developed anyway using the same cores that go into the iPhone, the iPad, the MacBooks, the iMac and everything else in Apple's lineup, just massively more of them. But if they go down the route of creating specific cores for these, the incentive to keep them updated disappears once again. Any squeeze on development time for the silicon teams will most likely mean that the Mac Pro is delayed as it's the lowest volume product that probably has the highest development cost per unit when spread across the numbers sold. This is what a lot of people have been referring to as potentially the X1 or P1 chip that's being developed specifically for the Pro. Now I could almost see the Mac Pro itself getting renamed as there's a lot of potential for confusion seeing as Apple's chip lineup now places Pro at level 2 of 4. That's underneath the Macs and the Ultra chips. Mac Extreme or Mac Workstation perhaps, although Apple still mentioned the Mac Pro is the one to be updated by name. Making our transition nearly complete with just one more product to go, Mac Pro. But that is for another day. In a world where Mac Studio just arrived out of nowhere, anything is possible, but we'll call it Mac Pro for now, just for clarity. So my hope is that the Mac Pro will use multiple SoCs, perhaps using the current chips as chiplets and adding more new on-package processing. Bigger media engines that then trickle down to the next generation, more modular I.O. controllers so that connectivity is never an issue, and probably more cache. While I don't see the Mac Pro adding third-party graphics, I can see them using off-package RAM for expandability as well as on-package RAM for speed, and making something along the lines of the MPX cards for adding storage controllers and hardware controllers for the audio pros who need to interface with studios and accompanying equipment. And obviously, if that connectivity is there, it can be used for other stuff too. There could even be rack-mountable XSurf style versions of these Mac Pros too. We did see that with the 2019 version, but it didn't really get a lot of fanfare. And once we see them in June, I'd expect them to be on sale by the end of the year. The Mac Pro in 2013, the iMac Pro in 2017, and the Mac Pro in 2019 all got revealed on WWDC stage and then went on to finally go on sale in December on all of those years. Maybe it won't take the full six months, but I'd not expect you to be able to order by the end of the week, even if you've got 10k or more burning a hole in your pocket. So that's my take on Apple's Rode Mac for the M2. M2 playing this WWDC in June with the Mac Mini, MacBook Air and MacBook Pro 13. Maybe the iMac in the fall, maybe with an M2 Pro option. Most likely the iPad Pro picking up the M2 as well. MacBook Pro and Mac Studio in the spring and Mac Pro or Mac Extreme Workstation at WWDC each year, probably starting this year. Now I've put a product list in the description that you can copy and paste with your date predictions for each. So I'd love to see your thoughts down in the comments. Thanks to all the patrons that support this channel. And don't forget, we could also see that uh, AR get a little bit of a sneak peek this WWDC too. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.